So hello everyone, I'm Nafis Sami and today we are going to discuss a very important chapter of O-Level Biology and Nutrition. So without any further delays, let us begin with our chapter. Every now and then we get hungry and we eat food. But has anyone ever thought about why do we require food? And the answer is here. Energy is the ability to do work and throughout the day we conduct many different works which may require energy. Living organisms consume food which contains stored potential chemical energy in it to provide energy for the vital activities of the body. Not only that, but also for the synthesis of new protoplasm, from which I mean repairing of worn out parts of the body and for reproduction, and also to maintain health, that is to prevent deficiency diseases. So the next question that comes to our minds is what is nutrition? And what is there in our food that gives us energy? Nutrition is the process by which living organisms like us obtain food and energy for growth, repair, and maintenance of the body. Nutrients in the food. The reason why we get energy and other nourishments like materials needed for the body from food is that it contains nutrients, which are chemical substances in the food which nourish our body. There are seven main nutrients in our food. The carbohydrates, the fats, the minerals, water, protein, vitamins, and roughage or dietary fiber. Now we can find carbohydrate in foods like bread, sugar, cereal, etc. And fats can be found in oils and butters, while we can see mineral salts or minerals in milk, cheese, red meat, and water can be obtained from many sources like from juice or from mineral water. Protein can be found in beef, chicken, while vitamins can be found in egg yolk, green leafy vegetables, and other fruits. Fibrous, fru uh, fibrous fruits can lead us from, uh, to obtaining roughage or dietary fiber. We can also obtain fiber, uh, fiber from wholemeal bread and cereal. Organic and inorganic nutrients are the two types of nutrients that exist in our world mainly. Organic nutrients are those nutrients that are obtained from carbon or and are obtained from living organisms. Carbohydrates, proteins, fats and vitamins and dietary fibers are the five types of organic nutrients while inorganic nutrients are those which are not compounds of carbon like water and mineral salts. Now summary of the process of nutrition. In the process of nutrition we see us consuming food then absorbing the nutrients and then using the energy and substances obtained in growth development and maintenance of the body. Now let us talk about uh, more in detail about the nutrient carbohydrate. Carbohydrates are organic compounds made up of the elements carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen and oxygen atoms are present in the same ratio as in water that is 2 is to 1. Now think about it like this. In the water we see the chemical formula as H2O meaning that there's two, uh, uh, two atoms of um, H or hydrogen and there's one atom of oxygen. Now in carbohydrate, uh, now example for the uh, monosaccharide C6H12O6, um, we see 12 atoms of hydrogen and 6 atoms of oxygen. So when we do the ratio, we get 12 is to 6, which is also equals to 2 is to 1. Now there are three main groups of carbohydrates. Those are the monosaccharides, disaccharides and the polysaccharides. A monosaccharide is the most simplest form of a carbohydrate that cannot be hydrolyzed to give a more simpler carbohydrate. Some monosaccharides are glucose, fructose, and galactose. And because of their simple structure, they are also called simple sugar. Disaccharides are also known as complex sugars, and each molecule is made up of two molecules of simple, uh, simple sugars. Now, maltose, fructose, and sucrose are some disaccharides. Polysaccharide is made up of many monosaccharide molecules joined together by the process of polymerization. Starch and cellulose and glycogen are some polysaccharides. Now let's talk about the monosaccharides in detail. Glucose, which is also known as grape sugar, is found in small quantities in all living organisms, while fructose is widely found in plants but rarely seen in animals, and galactose is a component of the milk sugar lactose and is rarely found in organisms other than mammals. 
Most simple sugars have the formula C6H12O6. So the question is, how are they different? They differ in the arrangement of atoms within a molecule, which leads to different physical and chemical properties. Now let's talk about disaccharides in details. Sucrose, which is also known as cane sugar, as it's mostly, uh, mostly found in the um, stem of sugar cane. Um, Sucrose is a carbohydrate that occurs naturally in every fruit and vegetable. It occurs um, in every fruit and vegetable and it contains a glucose and a fructose molecule combined together. Now here in the picture down below, you can see that sucrose molecule consists of a glucose and a fructose molecule bonded together. Lactose or milk sugar um, is found in the milk of all mammals and it contains glucose and galactose molecule combined together. Now let us talk about the disaccharide maltose, or which is also known as malt sugar. It occurs in melted cereals and sprouting grains, and it is basically found by the incomplete digestion of starch. It is a combination of two glucose molecules. All disaccharides have the formula C12H22O11, and just the way the atoms are arranged is what causes the difference in the properties of disaccharide molecules. Before moving on uh, in depth about polysaccharides, we should know what is hydrolytic and condensation reaction. A condensation reaction is a chemical reaction where two simple molecules are joined together to form a larger molecule with the removal of one molecule of water. For example, glucose plus glucose gives us maltose plus water. C6H12O6 plus C6H12O6 gives us C12H22O11 plus H2O. A reaction whereby a water molecule is added on to split up a complex molecule into its component units is known as hydrolysis or hydrolytic reaction. So from the definition, we can clearly understand that hydrolytic reaction is basically the opposite of a condensation reaction. Now, for example, sucrose plus water gives us glucose and fructose. In this case, we are using a molecule of water to break down a more complex molecule to its component units. Now let us talk in depth about polysaccharides. Starch. Let us begin with starch. Starch is one, uh, starch is one of the most important sucro, uh, sources of carbohydrate in our food. It can be found in cereals, potatoes, and tapioca, etc. But starch is not found or stored by animals. Starch can be detected by the iodine test. Now, for example, if you drop uh, iodine on the potato, you will see that the potato turns into a blue-black color. This is because it has starch in it. Now, glycogen is also known as animal starch as uh, it is the form of carbohydrate in which animals and fungi store their um, carbohydrate in their body. Now, in our body, we can see glycogen stored in the liver and the muscles. Cellulose is another polysaccharide or carbohydrate which forms the greater part of the plant cell walls. Cellulose cannot be digested by a man as we don't contain the enzymes which can digest it, but we still eat it as a roughage or fiber. All cellulose and starch and glycogen are made up of glucose condensed together, but they differ chemically and physically because of the way the glucose molecules are bonded within them. Now, let us talk about why are starch and glycogen suitable as storage materials. They are insoluble in water, so they don't change the osmotic pressure in the cells. Not only that, but also they are large molecules which are unable to diffuse through the cell membrane, so they can easily be stored. And think uh, about it like this. If glucose was stored, it can be easily uh, diffused through the cell membrane. And also starch and glycogen uh, can easily be hydrolyzed to glucose whenever needed, so uh, we don't have a headache about that matter. There are uh, compact molecules, um, so they occupy less space. Think about it like this. If 100 glucose molecules were scattered in a cell, it would occupy a lot of space. And here you have a compact, mo compact molecule or a compact shape, so it uh, occupies less space. Now finally, talking about the functions of carbohydrates. Carbohydrate not only is the main source of energy in our body, but also helps in the formation of supporting structures like, for example, cellulose in the cell walls. They are required for the formation of nucleic acid, like, for example, DNA. 
They are also required for the synthesis of lubricants like mucus found throughout our respiratory tract. And also they're required to be converted to other organic compounds. Thanks for listening to me, everyone. This was all on today's uh, for today's lesson. And I will be back soon with another video of the second part of the topic of nutrition. Thank you.